It's Denise O'Sullivan, you can all hear me. I'm um, a ceramic artist based in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, I'll, t I'll tell you a bit about myself. Um, well, I live in Stoke, uh, born and bred in Stoke, and been making handmade ceramics for the last uh, four to five years based on really kitsch ideas, based on um, actually English tea parties and Englishness, um, actually building a lot of ceramic cakes and using that as a, actually a vehicle to just give on Luca's happiness and thoughts and just get lots of meaning over to people and actually get people shocked as well. Um, and I like to use a lot of things that will get people talking. Uh, what's actually happened over the last couple of years as well is I've also been um, working a lot in community arts and working as a public artist, using actually ceramics um, just as a form really to get people talking. It's more of a therapeutic side of ceramics as well, so People are, people are using clay and talking, but they don't realise that they're interacting that way. So it's, it's a big passion for me is to using this as a vehicle to uh, get people talking. And I think what I was looking at when I was started this Gorilla Ceramics project that, that I've been working on um, was actually using Stoke-on-Trent, but using this vehicle of ceramics to talk about the city. So what I've actually been doing as my Gorilla Ceramics project is a, a project called Wish Boxes. And what I've actually been doing is working with local businesses, but in particular I wanted to work with a brewery. So it was the Titanic Brewery in Burslem, who it's, was, it, they started off in Middleport, produced their own beers, and it's got a lot of history about Stoke to the brewery. But I just thought it'd be a fun idea also that we would use uh, Titanic Brewery pubs as well. So it was actually doing sort of like a, a ceramic pub crawl around these pubs in Stoke to get people talking. And through that, I've desi uh, designed um, a series of ceramic beer mats as tiles, as plates that people could document their stories and designs onto. Um, and then from that, actually, I've worked with um, a, a filmmaker, filmmaker to document the project um, and hear all the stories. And what it was really was to um, do actually a, a cross-pollination of the city because I always find, being in Stoke, that if you're from Burslem, you don't travel to Longton. If you're from Longton, you don't travel to Burslem. And it, it was um, sort of trying to get people to move around the city and tell their experiences. But pretty much the work actually um, has been shown at the Wedgwood Institute in Burslem. And it's going to be a growing collection over the next three months where individuals can come along, add to their stories, whether they're from Stoke or not, because it's great to, for people to come along and just when they come into the city to tell us what they think. So that's also part of the, the ceramic tiles. Um, as a response to this on my own work, I've actually been taking this idea of when I've used ceramics before, it's always been about me working on the surface and actually using lots of coals and decoration. Um, through doing these interviews and working with voices, um, I've actually been looking into how I can use ceramic as a raw material and um, clay talking for itself. So I've actually, through this project, um, designed a series of lighting pieces, which are actually, they're actually raw clay, but it's actually stained bone china. Um, and these pieces are actually living forms, and the pieces that I've put together in the Wedgwood Institute are actually, so they're growing out the building, so they're actually part of the in initial uh, building. Uh, they're actually going to be continuous growing pieces, and it's actually looking at the raw beauty of bone china, but also I've been, um, I've got, they're actually um, organic swirl forms, and it's about people's voices, and it's about wave movement, and the way that you can actually use uh, one shape, but multiply it, it might be a hundred times, to build larger pieces. And um, this piece for me now, it's, it's really exciting time for me to develop this even more um, and use a lot of, I'm using surface decoration actually um, with lustres at the moment where I'm using traditional techniques of brushing, swirling um, and actually stippling on the surface to actually, to actually see um, and feel people's voices actually on the forms of vases and light pieces. So if you want to go across to Wedgwood Institute and have a look, you'll see this developing and growing even more. You'll also see the, the collection of ceramic tiles as well, the beer mats. And the way actually that the beer mats are also displayed has is, is actually come from a recent trip to Ch Tokyo whereby um, I went to a local, local uh, Buddhist temple and there's actually, you, you actually turn up at the temple, there's a series of boxes with a hundred drawers and you actually pick 
pick out, uh, you actually have a box, shake the box and a chopstick falls out and at the end of the chopstick there's a number and that number you go and find your drawer and pull out the drawer and it tells you your wish for the day and that was my whole idea of getting these tiles, having about 100 tiles all in sections that people then could come along, pick out there, I've actually used Kiln City, like, uh, pick out the Kiln City and then um, go and pick their tile and it's a story from the city so it's this cross pollination of people telling their stories. So I've actually got, this is actually a short clip of the, the ongoing talks of the city that are actually um, at the Wedgwood Institute. And just some of the, as we've been doing this pub crawl around the different Titanic Brewery pubs, just people's views of the city. And I think it's really interesting that at the start, there's a lot of negative issues, but as it finishes, we talk about how Stoke is at a crossroads and we have to embrace it and move it forward. And I just think it's important things that we all need to do, not just me personally in Stoke, but everyone in the in the nation really in the world just to come and embrace it and take it forward really so i'll just play this so you can see so we come to the best people in stoke content which is the bull's head the uh, the match that you've just got us to sign the uh, what, the, the titanic plates yeah, well, I, I made an appeal for um, I made an appeal for wreckage, and that's not the wreckage that floats on the sea. It's the wreckage that they brew, you see. And it gives you a funny head when you trip over the step when you go out of the pub. So I made an appeal on the pa on the back of the mat. Where is the wreckage? It seems to have disappeared. What does Benali mean? I understood the ceramic, but Benali, I don't know whether it was a, a feast or a, you know. Benali, 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 Benali. One of the best things that was ever written about Burslem pubs was written as a talk for radio, I think, in 1979 by Arthur Berry. And it contains therein, I think, the best and most deft description I, I've, ever, I've ever read of, of going into a pub early doors, seven o'clock perhaps, when the, the beer mats are freshly laid on the table. I was born in 1850, you know, and then I went down with the Titanic boat. I was in a time capsule, and then they found me when they found the Titanic. Your own logo. <laughs> that one. Oh, hi, I'm Dave. I'm uh, originally from Somerset, but I've been here for about 15 years. Uh, live locally. Uh, I'm in, sitting in my local at the minute, enjoying a nice pint. Um, the landlord's a good man. I follow the football. I love the city. Uh, the food's great. There's nothing more I can really say to that. And uh, I'm quite happy to live here now. My name's Pam Rowlands. I'm the manager of the White Star. We've only been open 18 months, but we're doing very, very well. Um, we've got all the Titanic beers on. They do two guest beers every month, different ones. Um, it's very nice to be here. Really enjoy the pub. The customers, well, the customers make a pub. That's what makes the uh, uh, community really that makes a pub. It's not bricks and mortar. It's the, the people in it. So this one says, "Up shars, back a jossies, where blind men kill dead osses," which is what my grandfather used to say to me. And the reason it's Mal Cop in the middle is because that's my first memory of Stoke, when my granddad used to take me picking bilberries in Mal Cop. Well, being as I now live in Tunstall, it's, um, it's a bit different from where I used to live in Old Sager, but, you know, it's, it's, an, it's not a bad town. I work in Tunstall Cafe, so I see everybody every day. And a lot of, something a lot of people actually neglect to notice about Tunstall is actually the architecture is beautiful. Like all the markets and the old ironwork and stuff, it's gorgeous. Oh yeah, so that's my beer map. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, I think I think Stoke on Trent at the moment it's at a it's at a crossroads, isn't it? And sort of, it's, I think it's up to it's up to people to sort of start redefining what Stoke on Trent means.
go along and see the work and add to the VMAT collection. <laughs>